What do you know about this course? I guess I know that it's about exploring the different ways that we understand the, the way we think, I guess. So, I mean, it's called Ways of Knowing, and I think that's really interesting. Um, and it's kind of introspective in the fact that it gets us to look at our own ways of thinking. I got a sense that this was going to introduce me into a whole new way to observe what I was seeing and form opinions on like my experiences that without it I wouldn't have. Whether, it's, whether I'm going to choose to focus on the astronomy or the physics or the religious side of the origins of life. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know what it's going to do for me exactly. So this is a piece of it. This is the oldest relic we have of the formation of the solar system. This is the oldest piece of rock we are going to hold. There is nothing older in the solar system. So I'm going to pass it around. I think I segued into uh, once, the, once you establish that the Earth is a member of the solar system, then the question of origin becomes a question of the origin of stars and of, sol of other solar systems. The asteroid collides with a planet, for example. It shatters it, but everything falls back down. So I talked about um, what we've learned recently uh, from Hubble and other places about um, the origin of um, other solar systems and how that relates to the Earth. My presentation was about how uh, motion originates and especially about how complex motion can arise. We had a demonstration of a, of a chaotic pendulum that showed students how a simple system can have completely random appearing, unrepeatable motion. Because the pendulum can do some extra stuff. This is so pretty to look at. I'm just wondering if somebody would be willing to paint a circle on one of the people that would just run this in front of us for a minute. This is a representation of what we see, but it's not what we see. So there's less and more than you see. This class is, it's really exciting in the way that we are learning tools that are really completely different from any other tools that I've learned in, in courses at, um, here at, at Wesleyan, in the sense that the ways of connecting and linking ideas. It doesn't just have to be in the sphere of, um, of, like a, of paper or computers, but it's like in the body and that makes, to me, that like expands ways of linking ideas. That's exciting. Have come. And I think that's one of the most interesting parts of this class is just exploring the parts of the way that we think that we can't explain in any other ways is trying to express those ideas um, that sometimes we can't explain through words and so we try through motion or we try through phase graphs. In the first part I was looking at the uh, emergence of the Big Bang hypothesis uh, in the first well, se second quarter of the, the 20th century. Um, where did it come from scientifically? What was the history of that idea? Um, but I was also trying to talk about the philosophical and theological precedents to this notion that the cosmos might have been expanding from a single point of space-time. Cosmogonies often, as you probably can guess, come to us from religion. Um, so everything that we would call a religion has some kind of cosmogony, some sort of account of the way the world comes into being. Um, some of them say, for example, that the world was born from a giant world egg. That there was, that there was a world egg, and then suddenly it cracked, and the world you know, emerged. Heraclitus said that it came from fire, and Aximander said it came from this thing called the infinite, just the boundless. The thing you see is a galaxy. It's a galaxy, and galaxies, the small galaxies, have 10 million stars in them, in small galaxies. And huge super galaxies have 100 trillion stars. Bindu represents the uncreated universe from which all things can be created.